Cancerian friends, and welcome to your horoscope for 2021. We made it, Cancer, so congratulations and welcome to 2021. I'll be thrilled to be traveling with you this week, every, or this week, this year, every week, every month. We've got the eat and greets, lots of good stuff happening over here, and I just look forward to connecting with you all year long. Now, as we look forward into 2021 for you, Cancer, it's a big year in terms of shaking up not just relationships but it's about your long-range plans and goals and dreams and designs and desires for yourself as well as your future plans and your associations with people in your life as well we've got this heavy amount of energy with planets being in the eighth house saturn's going to be here in the energy of aquarius we'll have jupiter for a time in the energy of aquarius as well and then we've also got Uranus, the ruler of Aquarius, over in the energy of Taurus, which lights up that 11th house, while we've got Saturn and Jupiter lighting up the 8th house. So as a result of this, what this looks like for me when I consider your year of 2021 is this idea of really breaking free from things from the past, getting at a little bit of a deeper level so that you can take that plan forward to the future. I feel like this year, Cancer, is definitely going to be the year that if there are things you haven't seen, haven't addressed, you've avoided them, including, this is not just the, oh, Cancer, you're not dealing with your feelings report. This is including the miraculous things about you, the things that you do well, the things Things that are your, your deepest fears because you're genuinely meant to do that thing and be a part of that. Any of these things that haven't been addressed and had their actualization and materialization, I think that this is going to be the year for those things to be happening. Now, it is not a year where I think we're going to just sail through, but I can tell you that even as we come into this year and we get ready for the very first Mercury retrograde, which happens right at the beginning of the year, Mercury is not retrograding in water signs this year. So you do have a lot of space, even during the retrograde period, to use this air energy, this thinking energy. You know, and, and one of the questions I have for you is I'm just being shown you, Cancer, with your ideas. It's like, what are the ideas that you've had up here that it is really going to be time to address those and let those go this year? It's very much about your thinking, oh, I tried that already, and so I don't need to go back to that. You know, were you part of a grouping or attached to a grouping of people or something like that or an association, and maybe you didn't find success with it before, and now you're able to go back to that or refresh an association with you that gets deep eighth house and allows you to become independent from some of your thinking or some of the beliefs that you had from the past and also deepen the current relationship you have with yourself and the current relationship you have with others. I like to say this right out of the gate because Saturn and Jupiter are going to be in Aquarius, but that's your eighth house space. The eighth house about those joint resources is also a wonderful place for healing, transformation. So I think therapy. I think, you know, do you have amends to make to people? Is there some kind of debt clean out or detox that is available in your life this year? Not even available, but like needed in your life this year. Is there some kind of just living in the deep, sexy intimacy that is the eighth house, but you're doing it in a way that is very, very public. So I would be interested to see, um, What's happening for you, even as you're coming into 2021 and you're listening to this forecast, what's happening for you that you can already see the starting to align? Because in the eighth house, this is the space as well of interdependence, not codependence. So there's fairly um, strong, independent, what's your place, what's your energy, what's your sexuality kind of energy that's available from this place that allows you to add to that interdependency with other people, places, and things. So I think it's going to be a beautiful year of working on that. We're going to also have eclipses this year, and these will be happening on the axis of your sixth house and your twelfth house. So I have a sense for you that truly just around health, this year, I want you to pay a little bit of attention. And health could be, yes, your physical body, your physical health, something like that. We've got stuff happening in a very serious way in the eighth house. So if this is a situation for you where a physical detox is needed this year of one of your organs or something like that to allow you to be healthy on a day-to-day -day basis, then I definitely think there will be some big news ringing true for that um, as we travel this year. But I also think, again, of the mental health 
of what's happening in your head? What's the conversation that you're having with yourself up here every day, right? What does your day-to-day -day routine look like? Are you healthy here? Are you healthy in a way that allows you to not only sustain your energy during the day, but a way that allows you to really be productive and present while you're in it? Because in your day-to-day -day life, whatever we're doing, you're showing up and being in service to some area of your life, whether it's another person, your animals, the people about you, whatever it is, there's this element of showing up in a day-to-day -day capacity and being of service. So can you be of service to your own life in a way that is healthful for you at this time? Now, we've also got that other eclipse happening in the energy of Gemini, which will light up the 12th house space. And the 12th house space, again, brings this idea of a healing that is very available for you this year, or it's like you're bringing something to a culmination or an ending. Now the 12th house and especially Gemini I think in the 12th house is truly I think of speaking and communication. So if there is a conversation or a communication with somebody from your past that you need to have or even your ancestors if this is a conversation you're having there and it's about bringing closure it is about bringing healing it is about bringing an intuitive sense of things that are coming through into a material plane I think that this will speak very very highly for the work that you have available to you this year. I just want to say one more thing about this 12th house space. You also will be experiencing that Uranus in Taurus energy. And we're going to have an eclipse in the energy of Taurus. So that's going to light up the 11th house for you. But I just keep seeing that this is like you were friends with someone at a time and you guys maybe had a breakdown or a disconnect let's just say disconnect and that looks like it's getting a healing this year so please let me know in the comment section down below if that is you okay all right let's jump in and actually talk about some dates that are happening here so i can get you out and enjoying 2021 so right at the beginning of the year we walk right into our first mercury retrograde right here in january and this is going to be happening on the 20th all the way until february and mercury will retrograde first in the energy of aquarius so you're going to take this relook at that eighth house area joint resources depth of your relationships intimacy connection interdependence not codependence collaborations all of those things come up under that eighth house evaluation then we will see mercury retrograde again from may until june may 29th and this is going to be in the energy of gemini okay so the 12th house review now yes mercury retrograde is just infamous for bringing relationships back up and even if they don't physically walk back into your life they come up for a review or a correction or to bring closure or to point something out to you. So as Mercury is retrograde in the energy of any of the air signs this year, relook at your thinking, relook at what you've said, relook at your mind around these things, okay? September 26th will bring us to our last Mercury retrograde for the year, which will be in the energy of Libra, which lights up your fourth house space, home family, real estate, property, whether or not you are in balance, you have good communication in these particular areas. For some of you, yeah, it could absolutely be um, a move, but it's almost like a move where you're going back to something maybe, or you're going back to um, you wanted to live here before and maybe it didn't happen. Ah, some of you looks like you will actually be reconnecting and making a family this year like you're you're bringing home back home like homes coming into balance now i do think with all of the healing work available to home that is here is absolutely um one of the shelters that will be healing and be coming back into balance as we're getting ready to close out this year now we've also got the big ticket items for the year which are going to be saturn and uranus squaring each other now these two have danced within orb of each other in 2020 as well but 2021 brings the time where they're really going to clash spot on with each other and this creates huge ripples for us in uh, the global sense but also personally so Saturn's going to be over here in the energy of Aquarius. Uranus is here in the energy of Taurus. So we see this clash happening, this square, this push, and this tension between your 8th house and your 11th house. So one of the things that I think here and I see for you is truly the difficult conversations, the difficult relationships, the difficult connections or associations, and this is giving me the sense too, again, of it seems like counseling or healing or something like that. But as these two square against each other, what I will tell you is please don't resist the changes that are coming up. Please do not fight against those changes. Instead, one of the most 
spectacular things you will be able to do for yourself this year is be flexible, be open-minded. As these two are squaring each other these three different times, they meet where they're both out of retrograde, one's retrograde, then the other's retrograde. So it may also have this sense for you under this push and this pressure between this eighth house, between this 11th house, that you're trying to move something forward and it feels like it's getting stuck innovate and also adapt to the changes that are around you instead of trying to force your way in it or resist the change that's happening because the saturn you're on a square doesn't always bring changes that we're ready for right now but it's like our life is ready for it right now so we kind of got to get with it and get going so just keep that in mind as this happens in february june and december that you have the opportunities to be flexible enough to show you to allow these to show you where you're actually getting out of the rut now as we get to that eclipse season that we've got going on well before that, we've got Jupiter moving into Pisces May 13th, and he's going to be there lighting up the ninth house space. All of the expansion becomes available to you. It's also this energy that spiritualizes this particular area of your chart. One of the things I was thinking about as well, though, is because Jupiter will be in charge of these eclipses as well that we have um, May 26th and then again in December is that I think that there is this opportunity for travel for you cancer and even though we've got COVID going on or we've got shut down or whatever it looks like wherever you're at in the world the opportunity to travel here could also be learning that happens um, via the internet or it, it's some kind of learning or some kind of expansion of yours that allows you to travel without actually leaving so that could be something that you definitely want to look out for. Now, the eclipse season kicks off for us May 26th with the, an eclipse at five degrees of Sagittarius. This is going to be a lunar eclipse. So again, this lights up that sixth house. It says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted, and it's going to play out for about six months in your life. So in that health, in that daily routine, all of that stuff I spoke about before. The next one will be June 10th, where we have a solar eclipse at 19 degrees of Gemini. So this is going to light up that 12th house space just back over here. So as that lights up that 12th house space um it's going to also give you some space to do that closure, but also be highly creative. Maybe take some solace. Maybe see that you need a little bit of downtime to be on your own. Make sure you check in with yourself there at that time because the 12th and the 6th house are very, very active. So make sure you're checking in with what's real and what's going on in your head and what's also happening in your body as well. On the 19th of November, we've got that lunar eclipse happening at 27 degrees of Taurus, so in the 11th house space here. Now, this eclipse happening here is also quite, quite innovative because Uranus is there. So truly, with this grouping, you could see a rearrangement, or with this eclipse, you could see a rearrangement of your groupings. You could see um, maybe people you've been connected to for a very long time in that next six months falling out of your life and you're maybe reconnecting in a different way with somebody else or you know if there is a community whether that be online or just in your social think places where you're social you might be um, detaching from them in some way shape or form so this will be an interesting time to see what Taurus shakes out for you but whatever it is in the Tauran energy that Uranus is shaking and that this eclipse is also bringing to light it's a place that's been pretty fixed in your life for a while so it's not necessarily something new but now you're prepared to allow it to be shaken free so that you can have something else in this particular area when we get to December 4th we've got a solar eclipse happening at 12 degrees of Sagittarius so again in that sixth house wonderful time for beginning new activities new freelance projects new health situations in your life maybe getting new knowledge even over your health situations in your life remember jupiter is the ruling planet of this particular eclipse and between the dance of aquarius and pisces really getting some illumination about the depth of what you need to take care of yourself in a day-to-day -day way the depth of maybe where things are and behaviors and ideas are holding you back and you can make an adjustment to those with this particular eclipse to clear out the space clear the way and allow for a healthy of service set of attitudes and actions cancer to really help you along now as we get to december 19th we're going to see venus taking a retrograde in the energy of 
Capricorn. Now this is going to light up your seventh house space. So just right across the street. Okay. So this retrograde, we relook at relationships and this is the relationship house, conscious chosen relationships and the space of open enemies as well. So you are going back over that. So I think business sometimes when I think about the seventh house as well, those business partnerships. So it's like if you wanted to link up with somebody or you maybe were linked up with somebody, oh, somebody is redoing their lease at this particular time, December 19th. This is the time where you might be redoing your lease or something, or you're coming into a renegotiation of something like that. So think contractual or think partnership contract or something like that. Some of you could be deciding, you know, do I want to be married? Do I want to stay married? Do I want to get divorced? I think that this Venus retrograde, which will last into 2022, will certainly be um, a time where you're re-looking at financial obligations, commitment obligations within your relationships. Now, Venus retrograde is as infamous for bringing people back from the past as anything else is. So if people are showing up at your doorstep or they're showing up in your mental doorstep, Please just remember Venus is asking for resolution to balance it out and to bring the harmony that is needed here. If this does happen to be just really current relationships and you're single and you're considering even your connection with, with friends a little bit here, it's more so the question is very Capricorn. Can I achieve with these people? Can we achieve in this structure? So as Venus is retrograde, you're looking for the value of can we achieve with this budget, with these friends, with these relations, okay? Now, as we close out the year, we get to December 29th and we see Jupiter moving back into the energy of Pisces, ready to do a long trek here through your ninth house space. So your ability to expand out as we head into 2022 is immense. Jupiter is that ruling planet of Pisces, one of them in the traditional rulership. So your ability to expand out, and I really keep seeing as, as Jupiter has these touchdowns in Pisces for you this year, Cancer, this energy of like you're getting a new faith, a new belief system. Some you've got to believe in something higher or maybe you're moving to believe in something higher. Whatever that looks like for you, but this is an expansion of ideas that maybe will be tied to the letting go that you're doing this year. The uncovering, the digging, the magic, getting to the fear, but bringing it into that material plane that is super available for you this year. So I think it's going to be a good year. I don't think it's going to be, we're not going to just march through it, right? And that is in a global sense. I don't think we just march through it. But in your personal space, in your personal way, hopefully you can take this forecast and you can take some of these things and align it with where you are now from whenever you're listening to as you walk through 2021 and see where these make sense in your world, okay? All right, Cancers, like this video, comment, share, subscribe, join me at the Eat and Greets, join me on Patreon, just join me this year and let me join you. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video we have together. Bye, Cancer.